it really is not a, a question of, of how much we'll set aside. It's more a question of how much we'll have to let go along the way. And I don't know the answer to that question. We'll figure it out as we go along. You know, I think there are some things like jet airplanes and automobiles that <clears throat> probably won't, won't make the cut. Globalization has been the biggest economic trend of the past few decades. Globalization actually makes our communities less resilient because for more and more of our necessities, we're depending on longer and longer supply chains, more and more vulnerable supply chains as fuels become more expensive. I think we're gonna to have to redefine wealth and poverty. We're gonna to have to redefine wealth downward and poverty upward. I think that the transition towns are an example of, of real social change in action. The transition movement is quite an audacious idea. It's a grassroots-led thing that ordinary people make happen in the place where they live, where they try to build their local economy, decarbonize it, but to see that as a historic opportunity to do something extraordinary. So a transition group is always putting on events, showing films, setting up projects, running events that introduce possibilities uh, into the community's consciousness. What I love about having been part of Transition Town Tottenham is that when I walk around the town, I can see things happening that have happened because of that work. So this is the Healthy Futures Garden, and uh, this works with the local doctor's surgery and trains uh, local people who have obesity or heart disease or whatever, how to grow food. There's some leeks here, which are a really great kind of winter staple vegetable. So this, this, is, uh, this is red Russian kale, and really, really delicious. If you're making a salad, it goes really nicely with this, which is uh, rocket, or rucola, they call it in Italy. The Totnes spends 30 million pounds a year on food, and of that, 22 million is spent through just two supermarkets. So more than half of what we spend on food leaves this town. The upside of that, though, is that a third of what we spend on food, we spend in local shops. So our take is that actually that's the foundation on which we build the economy of the future. Uh, we run a scheme here called the Topless Pound, which is a, a local currency you can only spend in local businesses with local traders. So um, these are the new Totnes Pound notes that we will be printing. It's, uh, it's not created out of thin air. It is, it is backed by sterling. And <clears throat> they've got local scenes, and you can use the Totnes Pound in about 70 shops. Thank you. I shop and won't. Yeah. So the idea of the Totnes Pound, or the idea of local currencies, is to keep money in the local community, because of course you can't take a Totnes Pound and spend it in London. Everybody's happy. Brilliant, thanks very much. I think the incentive is just feeling that you're, you're doing something for your local community. So what you can see over there on the <clears throat> on the big building over there, that's the uh, that's the civic hall, which is the main kind of public space here in the town. And uh, the solar panels on the roof of that were put in place by TTT. And the idea is that the money that's generated from the electricity there goes into an energy efficiency fund for both for the building and for further afield in the town. This is the display panel down about the, um, the solar panels here on the, on the Civic Hall. Saved 25,000 kilos of carbon dioxide since they were installed. There's a Topless Renewable Energy Society, a community-owned energy company which has hundreds of members now and is installing different renewable energy schemes around the town. 
One of the key things we've done here is, is called Transition Streets. So Transition Streets says, get a group of people on your street together, knock on the doors, do you want to be part of this? You meet seven times in each other's houses. The first time you get to know each other, the rest of the time, you, one week you talk about water, another week you talk about energy. And then you make pledges of things you're going to do at the end of each session. My husband and I, if we'd been told at the start of joining this group, you must put solar panels on your roof, we would have not even started. That tells me how much CO2 we've avoided. It tells me how much I've avoided today mm -hmm. and how much I've avoided over the time I've okay. had these mm -hmm. panels. I'm, I'm more encouraged to have a go at taking green initiatives because my friends are there encouraging me into it. And you know, I haven't got to take the initiative on my own. I've got mm -hmm. someone there helping me mm -hmm. along. Yeah. yeah. It became a fun thing to do, didn't it? Mm, it was like it working as a team. Yes. And that's nice. Mm. And I remember there was one guy who came from Germany and he said, I'm, I've come all the way to see the famous Transition Town Top Lessons, you still have cars. It's like, well, you know, you might want to be a bit realistic about, about the, the pace at which this stuff happens. But at the same time, a lot of what Transition does goes on underneath the radar. It's about rebuilding relationships and connections and, uh, uh, and kind of inspiring people in ways that actually you don't see when you just first come and walk around the town. Transition really started and, has, and is still an experiment. It's all the time about saying, maybe we could, why, why don't we? Let's have a go at this. Uh, and it's that kind of creative process that I think really gives a community its resilience. I'm trying to be not part of the cash economy, so I fix bikes for pies or for fruit. Someone said he'd write me a poem. He wrote me this beautiful poem. And, and that's a very rich exchange. I think in transition we, we, we build on that and say that it, that it is also about the degree of possibility that a community feels it has at its fingertips. So rather than thinking you don't have any possibilities, which is, uh, which is a fairly bleak place to be, I think. Nobody knows how you decarbonise uh, and reduce the oil dependency and build the resilience of, of community after community across the world. But the only way to figure it out is by not waiting for anyone's permission, but by having a go and starting to do it. And there's now transition groups in 44 countries, in thousands of communities around the world, and together, as a kind of learning network, we're figuring this out.